Jesus, change our lives. Because only you can. And we thank you for it. Amen. Go real quick to Revelation chapter 17, verse 14. And I want to talk to us about choice. Somebody say choice. Message is not going to be simple. Neither is going to be hard. But I will tell the truth. We all choose, but what are our options to choose from? The difficulty of being a Christian in this day is many people think that they've been born Christian. Just because the United States tried to claim itself to be a Christian nation, it's not a Christian nation. It's a nation full of, of people that think they're God. So because your parents might be saved and you're born to them, don't make, doesn't make you saved. God doesn't have any grandchildren. You have to choose. Somebody say choose. You know, there's a, there's a funny statement that says this. It says you can choose your spouse, but you can't choose your in-laws. But if I was you, I'd check. <laughs> Some of them coming with the deal. If you see her too close or him too close to certain people, guess what? They will be at the house. <laughs> All right, let me keep going. Revelation chapter 17 verse 14 says this. These shall make war with the Lamb, and the Lamb shall overcome them, for he is Lord of lords and King of kings, and they that are with him. Say with him. With Come on, say it like you mean it. Say they, say they that are with him are called and chosen and faithful. The ones that are going to spend eternity with Jesus in victory are the ones that are called chosen and and faithful. Many are called, but few are chosen. When you look at Jesus, when he gave that parable, the first parable that he said it in was he said there was a, a, a husbandman that had a vineyard who told people, here, work for me for a penny. And it was a lot more work to be done, so he called them at different times of the day. And at the end of the shift, the ones that worked the longest wanted more money. Come on, help me. And the ones that worked the least amount got the same pay. And that's where he said, the last shall be first, and the first shall be last. And then he said this, many are called, but few are chosen. I believe you and I need to make a decision on how we're going to make our decisions. Jesus went as far as say, why are you trying to tell me what to do with my own money? You agreed for a penny. And now you're going to say I'm wrong because I'm giving you a penny and I decide to give somebody else a penny? We're in a very, 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 very difficult time when believers are judging themselves amongst themselves. We're in a time when people are thinking God is hip. God's not hip. God's not down with that. God's God. He's seen generations topple. He lifts kings up and put them down. He's not hip. He's not going to acclimate to our society. Your preacher might. And that preacher will have to give an account when he stands before the king of kings and the lord of lords. And what's going to happen is he's going to say, I never changed this. Come on, help me. We're in a society now where they, they're believing that two men can legitimately have children together. They're believing that two women getting together can have children together. Or should I say, you know, get married. You know, we're even to the point where the president of the United States of America Agreed, but in a slick way, put it on his wife and kids. I can't see, I can't see, I can't see. They have friends. Come on, you, you have to make the decision because you're going to pay for it because others have accepted what you said as your decision. So we're in a time when the, the top people in the world are making wrong decisions. They're choosing wrong. 
And so where are the children going to be safe? They can't be safe. Because children need their parents to make the right decisions for them. And so these in the book of Revelation, they're called and they're chosen. And they've been faithful. See, some people are called, but they're just not chosen. It's a, it's a difficult thing to, be, to believe, but the reality of it is you choose to be chosen. God's called you. You got saved. What are you doing with that salvation? So he told them, work. And they had the wrong attitude. I'm not saying that they didn't, they, they, they got ex dis disposed of. But he said, many are called, but few are chosen. Maybe their attitude got them disqualified. They got the money. Come on. And in the second parable, when Jesus used that term, many are called, a few are chosen, is his wedding. Remember, he said there was a, a, a husband, a father that had a, prepared a wedding for his son. And he said, go into the, and, and to compel them to come to the wedding. And he said, we're not going. He said, well, go into the highways and the byways and get all of them. And a lot of them came. But there was one guy there without the right outfit. <laughs> How can you get in there? Doesn't that amaze you that he made it into the wedding? Where was the guards? So the, 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 the father said, how'd you get in here with that out, without an outfit on? And he said, bind him hand and foot and cast him out. He looked like he belonged there. Come on, on the inside, he thought he belonged there. How many people in our country believe they're Christians? They will tell you, Mormons will even tell you that they're Christians. Jehovah Witnesses will even tell you that they're Christians. Come on. And you have to ask yourself, can you say you're a Christian? <laughs> Many people believe they're a Christian based on Webster's Dictionary. But Webster says this, a Christian is someone who follows the teachings of Jesus Christ. That ain't never been a Christian. A Christian is one who has this spirit of Christ. Christian is not, uh, it's, not a, it's not a religion. It's an office. Thou art the Christ. When the Holy Ghost came upon Jesus, he became the Christ. When the Holy Ghost comes on a believer, they become Christians. No Holy Ghost, no Christianity. You can follow all the teachings of Jesus you want. It's not about the teachings because you have some unsafe people that follow his teachings better than safe people. But at the wedding, they ain't going to have the right garment on. You know what? You want, you want, let me say this, then I'm going to finish this message. It's going to be really nice that some of you that didn't do well enter in. And those that dotted their eyes, crossed their teeth, thought they were getting in, and the door gets slams in their face. Not because you were better than them, but because you were dressed right. You chose to put the right outfit on. I'm coming in by grace. Prophet Tyler left already? Oh, there you go. See, when he, when he cut his hair, I need to see the shine from the light. Floyd, you shining. <laughs> I try to go bald, you know, but only one spot at a time. I was looking at somebody <laughs> that was, this, this young guy is very intelligent. And he, was, but he started balding. And I said, oh, no. Because I know I'm smart. <laughs> all right. It's all right. Now, I want to look at Peter. When you're looking at choices. Go to Matthew chapter 16, verse 13. Because looking at different people in the Bible, you get to see how they made choices and how you. When you look at people in the Bible and you see their choices and you see the end result of their choices, then you recognize what can happen to you. Peter is a prime example of a man 
that's doing his best, but just don't recognize that his options are limited. Peter can hear from God and the devil. And he makes the choice. Once for God and once for the devil. Many of you, if not all of you, have made some decisions for the devil. You didn't know it. It was a good decision to you. And you've been paying for it. And whether you even know you're paying for it or not, you're still paying for it. You ever borrow money on a credit card? I remember when I was young and dumb. I thought I could outslick the system. I, you know, borrowed from Peter to play Paul. My visa bill was high, so I took American Express to pay it that month. Come on. And then try to come up with some money to pay the American. Come on, you talk about get your... You can... All right. Never mind. <laughs> Don't choose like that. Matthew chapter 16, verse 13. When Jesus, when Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked the disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And they said, Some say thou art John the Baptist, some Elias, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He saith unto them, But whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. See, Peter said, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood have not revealed it unto thee, but my Father, which is in heaven. Go down to verse 21. From that time forth, Jesus began, excuse me, from that time forth, began Jesus to show unto his disciples how that he must go unto Jerusalem, and suffer many things of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed. See, Jesus said, I'm going to be killed. Jesus said, I'm going to be killed. We're talking about choices. Jesus said, no man takes my life. I choose to lay it down. And be raised the third, again the third day. Then Peter took him. Where's, where's somebody that, that can't get in too much of a flashback? Everybody has flash, flash, flashbackable. Now I'm not calling my daughter no more. No. No, no, no. No, she's too short. All right, Eugene, come on. You're from France, but don't act like you're from the project. And look what it says. Then Peter took him and began to rebuke him, saying, Be it far from me. Now, rebuke, you know, grab me. And say, oh, he's, he's from the project or what? He has, he has, he has flashback. Look at him. Oh, nice. All right. <laughs> say, say, far be it from you. <laughs> say, far be it from you. Yeah, far be it from you. Far be it from you. Amen. Okay, you can let go now. <laughs> I taught him how to act in one play, and now he's a master at it. Now, now watch the scenario. Look, then Peter took him and began to rebuke him, saying, Be it far from thee, Lord, this shall not be unto thee. But he turned and said unto Peter, Get thee behind me, Satan. Here is Peter. One minute, he's saying, Thou art the Christ. And Jesus told him, God spoke to you. People are like, Yeah, God spoke to me. He was probably told all the other disciples, Yo, you heard that. God spoke through me. And now Jesus talking about I'm going to die. And Peter go grab him. In front of all the other disciples and rebukes him. Say, far be it from you. You're not going to die. And Jesus said, you better get your hands off me, you devil. <laughs> See, the reason why I'm trying to tell you this is because in all of our lives, we've been challenged. We've, we've been making some decisions once for God, the next time right from the devil. But God says, after today, them days are going to be over. You're going to make godly decisions. I got to, you know, go to Matthew chapter 26.